In this video, I'm gonna explain the best practices for finding an electrical fault on a bottoms up beer dispenser. If there's an electrical fault in any of the sensors on any of the circuit boards, it can cause some or all of the circuit boards to have issues, uh, power cycling, loss of memory, not being able to turn on, not being able to turn them off. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the method to prove each individual circuit and each individual circuit board, whether or not it's good or not. And the way that that method starts is to unplug the dispenser at first. In this case, if you're looking up at a dispenser from the normal installation side, uh, the power usually comes in on the left when you're looking at it. I have this dispenser flipped upside down so that we can have a good view of what is going on here. So first step is to unplug the power supply from the first circuit board, which will unplug uh, the power to all of the circuit boards that are connected through the jumper system. Next step is to disconnect every wire other than including the jumpers from every circuit board on the dispenser. So however many you have, you wanna uh, um, unplug them all. The uh, little retaining tabs on these can be hard to get with your finger, especially when they're tucked up against the valve. So you can either use a control screwdriver, um, a small flat blade screwdriver, uh, what I use, if I don't have anything else, is a ballpoint pen with the pen out. So I push right on the tab, gently pull on the wire, and it'll come out. So you go through, you're going to disconnect the LEDs, you're going to disconnect everything. Because the way that these circuit boards are connected, you can actually have a fault that translates through the circuit board, that translates through the chassis of the dispenser. So you go through, you're going to unplug every one of the sensors, every one of the LEDs, you're gonna unplug the solenoids, you're gonna take the jumper wires, disconnect them. The reason we do this is so we can isolate each individual component and bring it online in a controlled fashion to check whether or not the fault remains. So you're going to unplug all of the circuit boards, like I said, unplug all of the sensors here, making sure that the first circuit board isn't connected to anything else. So next step is to power up the first circuit board, making sure that the little ground eye is connected. Um, this is very important that this is connected to uh, the uh, bracket here that also neutralizes any ground currents in the chassis itself. Now that this circuit board is plugged back in, next step is to check whether or not this circuit board will power up. So we wanna make sure that the lights come on, that it allows you to change from um, poor mode to program mode to prime mode, that everything is working. The next step is to plug in the solenoid into that circuit board. So that's this two prong. You're gonna plug the solenoid in. You're gonna check and make sure that the board um, is still powering on and off, still cycling through the different size buttons, still allowing you to change the different modes. Then you move on to plugging in the flow sensor, which is the uh, red jacketed cable, and it plugs into where the red dot on the circuit board is. So we're gonna plug the flow sensor in, go through the same functionality test. Next will be the cup sensor. Plug the cup sensor in, make sure that we have functionality on the buttons and the rest of it. At this point, we can actually test whether or not the valve will open and close. So with a keg untapped, you can put it in auto mode, put the uh, cup coupler on there, slide it down and to hear if the valve is opening or closing, all while making sure that the circuit board stays powered up. Once that's done, we're gonna plug the LEDs in one at a time. We're gonna do the same test, seeing if that LED light comes on. Then we're gonna plug in the last LED light on that circuit board. Now we have this full valve assembly um, connected with all of its sensor wires and this circuit board and this circuit board alone is powered because we don't have the jumper connecting from one board to the next. Once we prove functionality on this board, we go through the same process on the next board. So you plug this board in, immediately checking whether or not um, the, the first valve still works and that the second circuit board has powered up and is allowing you to turn itself on and off, change through the um, different sizes. Solenoid gets plugged in, double checking that everything's working. 
flow sensor gets plugged in. That's the red one again. Checking to make sure that both of these circuit boards are still operational. Cup sensor. At this point, once these two sensors are connected and the LEDs are um, left disconnected, we will test the functionality of the valve, then introducing one of the LED lights, and then the next LED light after testing. Now, if at this point, if at any point, when you plug in an item that is shorted or has a fault on it, and you see that something starts going wrong with the circuit boards, that's the indicator of what has gone wrong. Normally, um, when it's an electrical issue, what can happen is the LED lights inside the LED housing itself, the LED can fail, causing a, a grounding issue that can trip out all of the circuit boards. When they turn on and turn off immediately, they're trying to protect themselves. So it usually means that there is a ground fault somewhere, most likely on the one of the LED assemblies. But the way to absolutely prove or eliminate something from being an issue is to start on the first valve, bringing everything online in a uh, um, specific order, and then moving on to the next one, doing the same thing. So again, that order of bringing it online would be to power the board, check and see if it turns on, making sure that any other boards that you've powered up are still working, plugging in the solenoid, checking if we still have functionality and that we have power on this one still. We do the flow sensor, again, checking everything. And if when we plug this flow sensor in, if everything started to have issues with it, if the lights started flashing on the other side, if the circuit board started turning off, and this is the newest component that we've introduced, most likely this is the component that has gone bad. Just because in the past that it's been the LEDs that's caused this issue, it could be any of the electrical components that is plugged into it. It could even be one of the circuit boards itself that causes it. So that's why you plug the circuit board in without anything else plugged in. It is important to note that uh, if, you, this, if this line is functioning and when you bring this circuit board online, if it has uh, uh, an issue and it introduces the fault to the other board without any components plugged into it, you know that the circuit board is bad and that would be the one that we would need to change. This method allows us to narrow down and troubleshoot to which component or which circuit board or which valve assembly is causing the issue that we're having so that we can, um, uh, we can rectify it and uh, get it back functioning. So it takes time, but we allow the system and the reaction of the circuit boards to tell us whether or not there is indeed a fault in the last component that we plugged in. So again, we go through one at a time, we do the power, check if it works. Plug in the solenoid, make sure it's still functional. Flow sensor, check to see if everything's still working. Cup sensor, at that point, the uh, cup coupler should fire the um, solenoid itself and then you move on to one of the LEDs and then the next LED. Um, running through that process will bring us up to a point where if we have a fault, right when you plug it in, you should start seeing the issues that you were seeing um, when the, uh, um, when the uh, fault was active at the start. And at that point, we can leave that component disconnected until a replacement component can be sent. But that's the method for finding whether or not uh, a circuit board is causing the issue or if a sensor or an LED or a solenoid is causing an electrical issue in a bottoms up system.